Hey everybody, what's going on? Just back with another video. So uh, we do have some bad news regarding Robert Kennedy Jr. Now I do have a video to play. This isn't about the bad news. I just wanted to, you know, kind of talk about what's going on with Robert Kennedy in New York. So basically what's going on is the Democratic Party of New York has basically sued Robert Kennedy for being on the ballot. And the reason they're doing it is because, well, first of all, they don't want him on the ballot because they're terrified. But second of all, they want, they're doing this or the, how they're doing this is that they basically said that, you know, in order to be on the ballot in New York, you have to have residency in New York. Now, Robert Kennedy does have residency in New York, but it's not his primary residency, apparently, in that they're making the claim that Robert Kennedy actually lives in California as his permanent res res uh, residency. And this happened probably about a week or so ago, and the judge today ruled that you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. is not going to be on the ballot in New York State. Now, some people will think, well, that's not very not a very big deal because the Democrats are going to win there anyway. That being said, it is a big deal because Robert Kennedy is going to have to pull some of these states. I don't think New York was going to be one of them anyway, but it could have been. Now, that being said, I'm pretty sure Robert Kennedy will also appeal this, talk to some lawyers and try to get back on the ballot. I really hope he can because you don't want other states to try to do the same thing, knowing that New York was successful. We've only got a few months away from the election. So if other states start to do the same thing, he could be pulled off of many very important states, and then that would give him even less of a chance of winning. And um, whether you're a Trump fan, Kamala Harris fan, you're, or you're indifferent about all three of these candidates, if you are if you are a fan of democracy, you should want every candidate to be on the ballot. But go figure, the party of democracy, the party that says democracy is on the ballot, is now trying to kick people off of it. This is why a lot of people like me, if you had to choose between Harris and Trump, were choosing Trump. Because right now, the Democrats are much, much worse than the Republicans. Yeah, both parties have their issues, for sure. The party that says democracy is on the ballot appointed their nominee with no vote, and now they're trying to keep you from voting for Robert Kennedy. If this works, Robert Kennedy fans, we almost have no choice but to go over to Trump. Not a great choice. Don't think he should be the president again. But guess what? The Democrats deserve to lose even more than the Republicans do. They both deserve to lose, and this is the guy we this is the guy right here to do it. But if he's not going to be allowed to do it, and it's the Democrats stopping him, teach the Democrats a fucking lesson and get on the Trump team Trump and let's go. Because the Democrats winning is the worst option. And for all those indoctrinated fools who disagree with me, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that. You can support whoever you want, because that's what democracy is actually about. But the party that's preaching it, like usual, what, what happens on the liberal side? Every, th every time they preach something, they mean the opposite. Every time they criticize someone else for doing something, it's them who are doing it. And now they're, tr they're trying to keep our guy off of the ballots, and we cannot let this happen. We need petitions. We need protests. He needs a lawyer. Uh, there's people who donate to him. Lawyers cost a lot of money. Well, we got to help him out as much as we can because, I mean, this is absolute nonsense what the DNC is doing. It's not the Republicans suing Robert Kennedy to get him off the ballot. It's all the Democrats. They've done it in Texas. They've done it in New York. And they're the ones who changed the rules in the primaries to keep him off uh, from beating Joe Biden in that primary. Why do they want to do that? So that they could wait till Joe Biden wins the primary. Make a fool out of him in the debate, out of himself in the debate, which we all knew was going to happen. And then eventually they're going to pull him and then appoint their own candidate without anyone having a chance to vote. Democracy is on the ballot, they say. Trump's a fascist, they say. It's, it's unbelievable and it's sad. But that being said, we can't give up. You know why? Because Robert Kennedy Jr. is not giving up. So let's just take a quick look at this video. It's just from Robert Kennedy's personal channel. The title is It's Our Turn Now. Let's just have a, a quick listen and then we'll talk about it after like usual. We've given the Democrats a chance to fix this country. We've given the Republicans a chance. What has not had a chance is a unity government headed by an independent president beholden to no party, free from corporate influence, owing no favors to the Washington establishment, and ready to recruit the best ideas from all of those who've been left out. On July 12th at Freedom Fest, I warned that if we don't end our cold civil war, the country will descend into political violence. The very next day, there was an assassination attempt on President Trump. Thankfully, 
President Trump survived. Sadly, since that shooting, the hateful and unhinged name calling that is typical of our broken political culture has only worsened on both sides. This election isn't about left or right. It's about all Americans of goodwill coming together to end the tyranny of corruption in our system so that we can build America the strong. The situation is urgent. Please contribute as much as you can today. It's long past time that we put people before politics and country before party. With your help and contributions, we can take back this country and restore a government and an economy that works for all Americans. Well said, right? And you don't expect anything else from Robert Kennedy other than him, other than him to just deliver a really great message. This is why we need to help him, man. Like we, we need to get him back on the ballot and we need to ensure that the corrupt criminal party that is the Democrats do not continue to try to, sorry, they will try to continue to keep him off the ballot. We cannot let them. Not much I can do. I'm all the way up in here in Canada and I don't have enough money to fund his, his campaign. I would if I could though. But what he said is right. You know, we need to break th- free from the Uniparty. And we have a chance, and we haven't really done it since the 1800s. Politics in general since the 60s have become so corrupt, however, and it's taken people this long to wake up and realize that. And a lot of people, like Robert Kennedy has pointed out many times, want change. They don't want to vote for the for Trump or Harris. They just feel like they have to. And they've been convinced that throwing that voting for Robert Kennedy is throwing away their vote. It's not. I promise you, it's not. You're not throwing away your vote by voting for him. They actually went back and took a look at Ross Perot and then people who said, oh, if I could just vote or if I just voted for who I wanted to win instead of trying to keep someone else out of office, Ross Perot would have had a good chance of winning. Robert Kennedy Jr. is immensely more popular than Ross Perot is. I think we're going to see that in the election either way, but there will be a lot of people who are going to say, you know, I really like Kennedy, but I'm going to vote Harris because I just can't stand that mean old Donald Trump. There's also going to be people who are going to say, you know, I would vote for Kennedy, but I can't let Harris win. So I'm going to vote for Trump. If those people just voted for Kennedy, along with the tens of millions of independents and along with some of the people who never vote before, there's a pool of 150 million people that Robert Kennedy Jr. can and I believe has tapped into. They're not all going to come out and vote. It's not like you're going to see 300 million people vote in the election, but it's going to be above 150, in my opinion. We're going to see 175, maybe even 200 million people vote. Those extra voter, voters will go towards Robert Kennedy. And he will take votes from Harris and Trump. It wouldn't shock me that much if he got over 30 million votes. That's not going to be enough to win the general election, but it could be enough to force a contingency election if Robert Kennedy wins enough states to prevent Harris or Trump from getting to that 270 electoral vote threshold. Remember, if no one gets to 270, they go to a contingency election. And then what happens with the contingency election, how it works is you would have each state, I mean, just kind of pull this up here. So this is a electoral map. This is kind of I was just kind of playing around with this here. Let me just reset this. So this is what it's looking like right now. The gray states are undecided. Red Demo- uh, red Republican, blue Democrat. But you see all these numbers here, right? Those are basically like points. Just think of like delegates as a point. So Texas is worth 40 points. California is worth 54 points. Florida is worth 30. New York is worth 28. Those are the four biggest states with the most points. You have to get 270 points total to win the election. Right. So let's just say Robert Kennedy does. I'm not saying this is my prediction for sure, but let's say he does something like this. Uh, And then we'll go, let's say this happens. Look at that. If Robert, if the election goes this way, Robert Kennedy could win Wisconsin and Michigan and stop Trump and Harris from winning. Then we go to what's called the contingency election, where all of these numbers you see here, they all go away. And every state would get one vote decided by the House representatives, while the Senate would have one vote to decide who the vice president is. At that point, because there's 50 states, each state is now worth one point. You have to have one candidate get 26 votes. There's also a possibility you could have Robert Kennedy stop that or um, Harris and Trump could tie 25 25 
well, now what do they do? Well, now they got to figure something out. While they do that, Kamala Harris technically would become the first, you know, uh, or the next president rather, uh, rather, and the first female president. But what I'm saying here is that if this happens and then a contingency election happens, and that's also a tie, they could, I'm not saying they will, I'm just saying an option would be to go into a re-election. If that happens, that's when a lot of people will go, oh, wait, Robert Kennedy can win. I don't have to be scared of Trump or Harris. I can just vote for who I want. You would see Robert Kennedy Jr. do much better in a second election, in my opinion. That's by far his best chance of winning. That can happen. It's There is a decent chance that it goes to a contingency election and that the, intingen- the contingency election is also a tie. I don't know what the exact odds are on that. This is very difficult to predict. I've never seen an election like this before, and I think most of you can say the same, at least as adults anyway. But that being said, breaking it down like this, and again, it's going to take a lot for this to happen, but he only has to win two states potentially, or maybe even a third state, depending on how the other states go. Because as long as he blocks either party from getting a 270, which in this example he does, he's got a shot. If we can get to that re-election, I would expect Robert Kennedy's numbers to go from 30 to 40 million up to 50 or 60, and then he could win. Or maybe force another contingent. I don't I don't know what would happen. Either way, we're about to see an election that no one has really seen before. Robert Kennedy is absolutely a threat to win multiple electorals. So all this, oh, you're throwing away your vote nonsense. Don't believe it, guys. If you're an American, go out and vote November 5th and make the right choice. For Robert Kennedy Jr., he's the only option to really make changes. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you have any other information to to, uh, input as well, if I missed anything with the whole contingency election situation, uh, please let me know. I really, really enjoy uh, listening and, or sorry, reading and responding to your replies. Uh, Thanks so much again for watching, guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.